now let us discuss about universal turing machine in short we can call it as utm so first point universal turing machine is a theoretical concept proposed by alan turing so this concept was introduced by alan turing in 1930s and it is a theoretical concept next point universal turing machine is a device capable of executing any computation just like a general purpose computer so universal turing machine can perform any operation does the computer perform suppose if the computer performs 10 operations then all the 10 operations will be performed by universal turing machine so its capability is similar to general purpose computer normal computer next point a turing machine is a mathematical model for any computational problem so we know that in order to solve any problem first we need to follow some mathematical model that mathematical model is nothing but the turing machine next point so we have a turing machine for addition and another turing machine for subtraction etc so here for each problem we will have its own turing machine so for addition operation we have one turing machine for subtraction operation we have second turing machine for multiplication operation we have third turing machine etc so likewise for each problem we have a separate turing machine so with the help of one turing machine how can we solve any problem so already i said that a universal turing machine is just like a computer only it can perform any operation just like a computer but here the problem is if we want to solve three problems then each problem has its own turing machine but so here the point is with the help of only one turing machine how can we solve all the problems so i want to perform addition subtraction multiplication division so with the help of one turing machine how can we perform all the operations so that is the problem here so uh, that can be achieved by universal turing machine a turing machine is said to be universal turing machine if it can simulate the behavior of any turing machine so this point is very very important point we can call a turing machine as universal turing machine if it can simulate that means universal turing machine can implement the behavior of any turing machine so universal turing machine can perform addition operation subtraction operation multiplication operation it can simulate it can implement it can perform the behavior of any turing machine so we can say that universal turing machine can be used to solve any computational problem so for solving any computational problem we can use the universal turing machine let's see the next point a standard turing machine is said to be unprogrammable turing machine yes it works only for one computational problem so here standard turing machine is called as unprogrammable turing machine why because with the help of the standard turing machine we can solve only one problem whereas however universal turing machine is programmable turing machine as it works for all the computational problems so here the advantage of the universal turing machine is with the help of the universal turing machine it can simulate the behavior of any turing machine so with the help of the universal turing machine we can perform any operation universal turing machine is just like a general purpose computer only so with the help of the utm we can perform any computational problem we can solve any computational problem so let's see how we can do that so this is the diagram here so here we have universal turing machine here initial of one tape we have three tapes so this is nothing but a multi tape turing machine only 
tape 1 contains description of the Turing machine, tape 2 contains content of the Turing machine, tape 3 contains state of the Turing machine. So here we have three tapes, tape 1 contains description of the Turing machine. Let us assume that we are solving addition operation. So now that addition Turing machine will be stored here. Let us assume that we are performing some multiplication operation. Now that multiplication Turing machine will be stored here. So tape 1 contains description of the Turing machine. That means tape 1 contains the Turing machine information. Whereas tape 2 contains content of the Turing machine. So content means it may be input content as well as output content. So both input and output content will be stored in tape 2. Next to tape 3 mainly contains state of the Turing machine. So on which state currently we are performing the operation. That state information will be stored here. So now let us see about how we can describe the Turing machine. So let us see that point. We describe or we encode. So in order to describe the Turing machine we have to do the encoding. We describe the Turing machine as a string of symbols. So with the help of symbols we can describe or we can encode the Turing machine. Here mainly we have three types of encoding, alphabet encoding, ABC are nothing but alphabets. So this is nothing but encoding. Second type of encoding is state encoding. So Q1, Q2, Q3 are nothing but states, whereas 1, double 1, triple 1 is nothing but encoding. Next one is head move encoding. So here moves are nothing but left and right, whereas encoding is nothing but these symbols. So now let us see how we can describe the Turing machine. So here what is the advantage of the tape 1? Tape 1 mainly describe the Turing machine. The Turing machine information will be stored here. But, it'll be, but it will be stored by with, with the help of some encoding. So let us assume that here the alphabets are ABC. ABC are nothing but alphabet symbols, input symbols. So A is encoded with the help of 1. So all these are assumptions. So if you want in place of 1, you can take 2, 3, it is our choice, okay. So B is encoded with the help of double 1, C means triple 1. Next one is uh, state encoding. So Q1, Q2, Q3 are the states. So Q1 is encoded with the help of 1, Q2, double 1, Q3, triple 1. Next one is head move encoding. So left to means 1, right means double 1. So now let us define the encoding for this transition function transition function encoding. So delta of q1 comma a equal to q2 comma b comma l. So here what is q1? q1 means 1. So let us write that one here. Okay. So after writing the diagram, just you need to write about alphabet encoding, next to state encoding, next to head move encoding from top to bottom. For space constraints, I am writing beside this diagram. Okay. So here q1 is nothing but 1. Next, here in between Q1 and A, we have to use the separator. Here each argument is separated with separator. So what is A? A is encoded with the help of 1. So 1. So after A, we have to use the separator. What is Q2? Q2 is encoded with double 1. So here this is nothing but separator. So this is separator. Next, this is separator. Next, what is Q2? Q2 means it is encoded with double 1. So this Q1 is nothing but 1, whereas this A is nothing but 1, whereas this Q2 is nothing but double 1. Next, this 0 is nothing but the separated. Next, what is B? So B means double 1. So B means double 1. Next, 0 is nothing but separated. So for left, we are using 1. So likewise, we can write the transition function encoding very, very easily. So instead of that, let us write one more function. So let we have a function like this, delta of q2 comma b equal to q3 comma q3 comma let us replace b by a q3 comma a comma r. So let us define the encoding for this transition function. So what is q2? So q2 means double 1. So q2 means double 1. So this 0 is nothing but separated. Next what is b? b is also double 1. So b is also double 1. Next, next we have separated. So this is nothing but the separated. Next, what is Q3? Q3 is encoded with triple 1, triple 1. Next, next after that we have to use the separator. Next, A. 
a is encoded with the help of 1 next after that we have separator so this is nothing but a next what is right double 1 so this information will be stored in tape 1 tape 1 mainly contains description of the Turing machine okay so this is about universal Turing machine please like the video subscribe to the channel as well as share the channel with your friends thanks for watching